Let me ask you guys this. Okay. What? Do you ladies think it's a turn off if a man is too vain? Right? So he's fine, he's handsome, he's whatever, but he's also conceited. I read a list yeah. online of all the things guys do that make women see them as less of a man. I make one video about the real, and now YouTube thinks it's the only thing I want to watch. I guess that's just the kind of crap I have to go through to give you guys good content. No longer do I see anything from channels I actually like, I now exclusively see feminist propaganda. I mean, this has gotten so bad that I actually know the names of the entire cast of The Real. So now that The Real has incessantly annoyed me with fry spam, let's see what they have to say that's so interesting that YouTube feels it needs to show me it every time I click on the website. Tell me, you Fantastic Five, what makes a man less of a man? So some of these things included cockiness, Ooh, being yeah, sexist, no. I got and disrespecting their partner. No, Ooh, thank no. Do you see why you can never take advice from women about women? Not only do women, especially single mothers, have no idea what men want, they also generally don't have the self-understanding to know what they want either. The three things that Jeannie listed, cockiness, sexist, and disrespectful, are all things that women say they hate, but in reality, when you watch their actions, they end up rewarding that type of behavior with sex and female validation. Lonnie, can a man like... What can a man do in your eyes that would make him seem less attractive? Not had no money. Boom. <laughs> yes, that's one. I mean, like, yeah, I ain't I mean, talking about you got yeah, to have a lot. Thank but I'm you. talking about names, <laughs> none, dog. Right, none. Right now, I'm just showing this clip for later reference, so I'm not going to say much, but I do want to bring up that Tamar Braxton, who was fired off the show, and yes, I even know the drama of this show now, Tamar Braxton stated, that she doesn't like men who have no money. Take note of that. By the way, this is literally the only thing that was said on this video that was honest and showed any amount of self-awareness. For that, I give a standing ovation to Lonnie Love and Tamar Braxton, even though they backpedaled after they said it. Moving on, though. Let's claim our first victim. I don't like men who don't take responsibility for their kids. Oh, God. That oh, is absolutely manly. Yes. I don't like that at all. Or men who don't like man up to their mistake. Yes. They always who don't play like it. the victim all the time. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. They're always blaming everything. The else reason why I issues. did it. It's yeah. the baby mother fault. Everything's the baby oh, mother fault. Yes. I've said before that I think that most women are not empathetic like they claim to be, especially towards men. I say this because women are very often inaccurate at predicting people's behavior or their wants or needs. Also, if most women had any empathy towards men, then they would not be able to so brutally steal a man's wealth at every corner, even when they do the smaller things like pretend to like a guy so he will give them free stuff. That's theft, and you can only steal from somebody you don't empathize with. However, that does not stop them from labeling anybody who disagrees with them as lacking empathy or having a low EQ, or emotional intelligence, which, by the way, is not a measure of intelligence. It's just a measure of agreeableness. Now, I have looked everywhere for the Jordan Peterson video where he talks about this, and I can't find it. But basically, when you test the questionnaire for EQ against the questionnaire for agreeableness, EQ becomes a very accurate predictor of agreeableness. High EQ means agreeable, low EQ means disagreeable. Being agreeable or disagreeable does not make you smarter. But anyway, this is all just a projection on their lack of empathy, because if they could empathize with the men they are calling deadbeats, then they might be able to see why men act like that in the first place. Those of you listening, if you got a woman pregnant, and she told you that she was going to give the kid up for adoption, but then decided to keep the baby, would you be mad and resentful because she lied to you? Or would you be overjoyed and ready to take the responsibility for the decision that wasn't yours. Remember, it's her decision to keep the baby. You as a male have no choice, yet you bear the responsibility for her choice and are publicly shamed for refusing to pay for her decision. On top of that, all of the most effective birth control measures are exclusive to women. What if she lied to you about being on the pill and got pregnant? Is it now your responsibility to take care of a child that you had no choice over the conception of? Tell me, Tamara, could that be why men are reluctant to pay? 
and we haven't even gotten to the double standard yet. Well, maybe I did a little because Tamara says she hates it when men play the blame game, but then blames men as being unilaterally responsible for the problems in single parent homes. However, I'm sure you guys noticed that Miss Sister Sister, Tamara Mowry, hates it when men play the victim card. She must be joking. I mean, come on, it wasn't even that hard during the research for me to find an example of Tamara flashing the victim card. I literally found her doing it in the very first video I found, ironically called the double standard. And in a conversation with Blackish star Tracy Ellis Ross discussed the inequalities women still face in the workplace. Mrs. Obama said, quote, I wish that girls could fail as bad as men do and be okay because let me tell you, watching men fail up, it is frustrating. Mm. It's frustrating to see a lot of men blow it and win. Ladies. Blow it and win, yeah. Wow. Oh. Do you yeah. think Michelle Obama is right about a double standard when it comes to women, you know, it's, you know. Um, I do. I absolutely agree with her. Um, I think not only is that true for women, but minorities as well. Mm -hmm. um, <sighs> Before I comment on this clip, let me tell you about this video's sponsor, Redux Movement. Redux Movement is a growing website where you can get information on how to keep your body healthy with exercise. Its hip mobility program will teach you how to keep your hip joints healthy, and its power building program will help you design a strength training workout so that you can achieve your fitness goals. Check out the sponsor Redux Movement. It's the first link in the description. Anyway, Michelle Obama made some comment about a glass ceiling where men are so privileged that even when they fail, they get more opportunity than women. Tamara, of course, maintained the narrative and then doubled down on the victim card by including race. But you want to say that men can fail their way to the top, and that's unfair. What about the women who fucked their way to the top? I'm sure that the likes of Michelle Obama would just say the poor, helpless women were manipulated by their male boss when she had sex with him to get a promotion, and she had to do it or else she thought she might get fired or he might destroy her career. Women play that victim card all the time. Let's get back to our video on what makes you less of a man. Yeah. You don't know what I can't stand? What? Oh, Lord Jesus, hold me back. What? Uh -oh. <laughs> I can't stand a liar. Oh, oh. yes. That's like, a good one. It's so cowardly. Especially when it's the ones that lie about little white lies. I mean, you lied about everything. Yeah, right. little things. Like, babe, you made me. Yeah, I made that. No, you didn't, dog. No. You got, come on, you got that from the Cheesecake Factory. I just got that last yep. week. Why you lying about <laughs> dumb stuff? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, I lost my watch. Well, just say, you know, you're up to your ATM limit. Say something. Right. Yeah. I mean, come on. Like, yep. right. I, I can't just do lies. Be truthful. Be yeah. truthful, because you never know where you stand with, with a liar. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? Did you catch the double standard from before? Miss Tamar starts the conversation by saying that she hates it when men have no money. But only a little over a minute later, she says that she is fine if a man is honest about being broke. Which is it? Do you hate it when men don't have money, or do you not? I think the answer is obvious. Lying is so cowardly. Yeah, it really is. Like, it takes real courage to just keep it real and be honest, and guess what? No matter what, you have to respect the truth. Yeah, right? yeah. That's quite an interesting statement you made there, Adrian, because we all know what kind of person you are. So there's something called voice memo on your phone. Yeah. And you literally can put it on voice memo, lock the phone, put it down, walk out the room, let y'all talk about me, walk back in, play it back outside the room, listen to what y'all said, walk in and be like, so Tim, would you ever say that like, sometimes I can talk a lot? Like, would you ever say that? And then you might be like, of course I would say that. You do talk a lot, right? Yeah. Or you could lie to me and be uh, like, I would never say that about you, Adrian. And then I'd be like, bitch, you lie. <laughs> <laughs> and then, there yeah. it is. Like, yeah. wham, bam, Wait, I so have the evidence. I, you've done this on people? OK, not going to lie. I actually did this <laughs> in my early, early days of dating Israel. Yeah. I oh. did this in the car. I left my phone <gasps> on voice memo, put it into the side thing of the car, walked out, went into a store. I was like, let me see what phone calls he makes. Ooh. Let me see if he talks to anybody on the phone. Cause Tell me, was it cowardly when you recorded your friends without their knowledge so that you could eavesdrop on them and pretend that nothing happened? Was it cowardly when you secretly recorded your husband because you thought he cheated 
or would it have been better and braver just to talk to him about it? I think it's obvious at this point that this, this entire video from the reel is just a projection of female nature onto men. You hate liars? Well, women lie all the time. How about that makeup that all of you are wearing? Women use things like makeup, high heels, and push-up bras to lie about the attractiveness that they have, and they don't see a problem with that at all. In fact, it's just normal behavior. It's normal for women to lie about how attractive they are, but it's not the same story with guys. If you are a guy, and you lie about being a doctor to be more attractive to women, then you are a lying sack of shit. But no one says shit when women wear makeup. All of this just shows you how little these women have looked at their own faults, and instead spent that time flinging mud at others. He who is without sin should cast the first stone. If you are going to accuse somebody, then you should point that accusation at yourself first to make sure that you actually uphold the standard that you are putting on the other person. Pointing accusations at yourself is how you become stronger. Constantly pointing the accusations at others will make you weak. This reminds me of a small acting class I took with a few other people, taught by a moderately famous actor. During the class, one or two people would act, and the rest of us would watch. While we were watching, we would notice that maybe a person wasn't speaking loud enough, or they would mispronounce words, or maybe they wouldn't put enough emotion into the character. So after about five hours, roughly in the middle of the class, the teacher spoke to us and said, During the class, you have been watching your peers, and you have probably noticed that they have done a few things wrong. Now, in reality, they are doing like a hundred things wrong. But you honed in on maybe two or three. Why out of all the things they are doing wrong, did you only pick two or three of those things? Most likely, you picked them because they are true about you. If you notice that every person who goes up to act in front of the class is not speaking loud enough, and you haven't investigated that in yourself first, then it's true about you. You can cry and get all offended by that, or you can see it as a way of identifying all the things that are wrong with you that could be made better. At the very least, if you were saying, I hate it when a person does this, then you should be making sure that you aren't doing the undesirable behavior yourself. Getting back to the real though, let's follow the timeline. The eavesdropping video where Adrian Bylon says she records her friends without their knowledge and then lies about it came out this year in 2019. The video where she calls liars cowards is from 2016. Now, she mentioned in the 2019 video that she had been recording her friends for years. So, she makes the bold statement about liars in 2016 that all of them are cowards on TV and then goes and commits quite a big violation of her friend's privacy when she's at home. Failing to notice things like this will make you weak. Failing to notice these things will make you undesirable to good people because what quality person wants to be around those who lie all the time? What quality person is going to want to be around people who just fling their dirty laundry at others, including their friends, including you. If you happen to notice that everyone in your life is a liar, or at the very least, a lot of people in your life are liars, maybe the only reason for that is because you are a liar and they are the only ones who will put up with you. If your ex-husband slash baby's daddy is a deadbeat, then maybe the only reason he dated you was because you are a deadbeat too. If you notice that everyone around you blames all their problems on other people, that is true about you. If it wasn't true, then why would you put up with that? And that will be it for this video. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, comment and share. If you would like to support the channel, then you can do so with PayPal, Patreon, or Subscribestar. All of those links are in the description. Last, if you haven't looked at my BitChu channel yet, then go ahead and click the link in the description and subscribe to me there. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.